I have a problem. I need a call. <laughs> <laughs> so easy for you. Um, So welcome to our panel. I'm just going to give a couple more minutes to uh, participants to find us and join us. It's 11 o'clock in California. <clears throat> uh, I just want to mention to those who are uh, joining right now that it is possible to add questions or comments on the platforms. If you go and see on the right-hand side, uh, on the uh, uh, in the corner, on the right-hand corner, you'll see a little box where you can add your comments and, and questions. We have a very interactive panel today. Uh, we have a lot of different perspectives, uh, different generations, different regions, uh, genders, and, and backgrounds. So it will be a lively discussion, but we do hope to have interactivity with all of you. Uh, so whoever is joining, please feel free to uh, just direct the conversation as you see fit through the comments as well. I see Patrick has joined, so I just want to give you a hello. Hi, Patrick. I do love the, the emojis. I don't know if you know this, it's clap, confused, and mind blown. So I hope we have a lot of mind blown emojis happening during the conversation. Uh, for those who are joining as attendees, also feel free to um, write on the comments where you're joining from, your location, and if there's anything uh, specific on the family business uh, topic that you're interested in. Please also share with us, since I think it's going to be a pretty intimate group. I look forward to your comments. All right, I'm seeing some messages. Um, fantastic. It's 11 or 2. Um, so let's get started with some introductions and the context for the panel. Uh, we are here talking about uh, the next chapter for family businesses, especially in light of COVID and all of the changes that we're experiencing today. Uh, there is, in addition to the pandemic, um, technology trends, there is climate change, there is a uh, fourth industrial revolution that are going to present very interesting challenges to all businesses, but specifically to family businesses that um, have uh, added components, uh, a lot of tradition, a lot of uh, cultural as well as internal dynamics that make it uh, especially interesting uh, to deal with uh, innovation and change uh, within families. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of those changes and the opportunities that were created thanks to the uncertainty and the unpredictability that has been added uh, to the equation in the last few months. Uh, but also we have the uh, pleasure of having several generations here represented. In some cases, uh, they're operating generations in, in charge today, in control of the business. And in uh, the case of other panelists, uh, they are younger members of the family who are involved or getting involved in the business, but uh, perhaps not uh, in, in uh, charge of departments yet. So we want to hear perspectives on what each side uh, would like to see from uh, the other members of the family in terms of governance, in terms of transparency, and the type of conversations that uh, could be happening uh, in these families to increase the impact of the business as well as the uh, impact in the world of the entire group. So why don't we start with ladies first. Uh, I'm gonna start with mm -hmm. Andrea. So I'll give you just a very brief uh, introduction on their title and background. Um, and I'll uh, ask you to add a little bit more of color on, on your experience and your involvement in the family uh, business. And so, Andrea is the head of technology and innovation and Focus Global, which is a family business founded by her, her parents' generation. Um, this is a company that runs in the Philippines and Singapore. Uh, she's also a partner at Vector, which is uh, a vehicle through which she's supporting entrepreneurs and startups in uh, her country and uh, does a lot of investments as well. 
Um, she's really in charge of helping the company with uh, e-commerce, uh, first brands, and digitalization. Uh, but prior to going back to the family business, she was at Stanford in the Bay Area, uh, where she got her degree in engineering, worked for Square, um, the, the company that was also founded by uh, the same founder of Twitter, and uh, developed a lot of coursework for innovation at Stanford GSB, the business school as well. So welcome, Andrea. How are you? Hi, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, super exciting to be here with everyone and nice to see a couple of folks joining us from Singapore as well. Um, yeah, I think you summed it up pretty well. Uh, my background is mostly in tech, specifically in fintech. Um, when, while I was working at Square, worked on the data engineering team there. Um, and when I had the opportunity to move back to the Philippines to work in the family business, I knew that my thrust and my kind of contribution to the family would be more focused around technology and the new tools that we could integrate into a more traditional family business. So I'm the second of five kids and we're sharing the load across all five of us, which is pretty exciting. And I'm, I'm happy to talk a little bit more about that. But in general, um, you know, we're working on a lot of e-commerce first brands right now and taking advantage of a lot of new opportunities that COVID has presented us in, ter in terms of the digital space. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I'm, I'm really curious to hear more about uh, the relationship between the different siblings and, and the roles, mm -hmm. how you got to choose uh, the roles that you work on. And uh, specifically, you know, what are the conversations that are happening now that you're all uh, in lockdown, kind of locked up in one house and yeah, <laughs> working together, together and doing everything together. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get to that conversation uh, shortly after the intros. Let's, let's move on with Ravi, uh, Ravi, who's uh, in India, and he's the managing director of Santa Group. Uh, he started the infrastructure vertical there and also developed uh, projects in the solar energy uh, space uh, over the last uh, seven years or so. Also, he's uh, the leader of Gen or Gencrest, uh, let me know if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, um, a biotech research venture that has developed some very interesting technologies uh, in textiles with a new um, IP developed by a company. Um, he has a lot of experience in pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical domains and um, uh, very passionate about music and motorcycles as well, uh, which uh, I know is part of your identity. And so tell us a little bit more about uh, your current role at the company and some of uh, your vision on, uh, on the future of the business. Uh, so basically, I started with my family business, which was uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, about 20 years ago. And uh, uh, we, were, we are a large family. I mean, when I say family, it's three from the previous generation, my dad's generation, and four from my generation into same family business, which was a small company then. And uh, we didn't have enough elbow room for so many family members to be in a small business. Uh, we decided that we needed to move uh, or some family members needed to find their own space. So I moved into a moved into infrastructure vertical. And uh, I was uh, part of the infrastructure vertical for about six, seven years. But uh, uh, I realized that that was not my calling. And uh, when I wanted to get out, that was the time when uh, we had to have a lot of family discussion as to uh, how do we handle the family business then? Because if somebody doesn't want to do certain things, uh, what about the return on the investment we have made? So all those challenges were there. But post that, we had to sit together. We uh, decided uh, how things are going to move forward. And then I decided to move into knowledge sector and then uh, invested uh, into this biotech vertical where we are developing uh, uh, some uh, innovative uh, fibers through the waste biomass. Also working on products like bioethanol, uh, bioplastics uh, in our R&D center. And this venture I've been part of uh, and I'm leading this venture for the last uh, three years now. And... Uh, yeah, it has given me more freedom while keeping the family ties together because it, we settled the lot of pending issues between ourselves, uh, between various family members, so that everyone has uh, option to do what they want to do. Uh, and they are not uh, continuously tied down with family expectations. So uh, this is where uh, I'm leading the company now. 
Yeah, that sounds like a good spot where you get to work on some of your passions as well as still, you know, keep a tie with the family business and all. We'll ask you how how that happened and how other families could uh, emulate the governance system that you have in your family. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for joining. Uh, let's move on to uh, Jimmy and Danny, who are uh, part of the same family, father and son. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to hear both perspectives of the same family during the discussion today. Uh, Jimmy, uh, the father, is the president and director uh, and CEO of CM, which is the holding company of the entire group. Um, the company is in uh, several sectors in chemicals, mining, fuel distribution, shipping and supply chain logistics. Uh, and many other things. Um, Jimmy, um, before that, uh, has held many positions within the company, including uh, taking uh, the company public uh, in the 90s. So he's been very much involved with a family business for a few decades now, but also serves in the board of Habitat for Humanity, Happy Hearts Foundation, and does a lot of uh, philanthropy. Uh, Jimmy got a degree from uh, Thunderbird, uh, as uh, Ravi did as well. Uh, and um, the University of Oklahoma. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Danny and then I'll let you to introduce yourselves as well and add a little bit more context on your backgrounds. Um, Danny is actually a professional golfer. Um, really impressed to hear he's uh, number one, ranked number one right now in the whole country of Indonesia. And as a part of the family business, he's been getting acquainted with the different uh, departments and divisions within the company. Uh, currently pursuing a master's degree at Thunderbird uh, in applied leadership and management, uh, but also has a bachelor's degree uh, from Bradley University. So welcome and, and thank you for doing this together. I know um, there, there will be a lot of uh, juicy insights between the two of you. So we look forward to hearing uh, some of the agreements and also, you know, areas in which you do have uh, disagreements and how you envision the family business as well as the uh, conversations that are happening today uh, within the family. So welcome. Uh, Jimmy, would you like to say a little bit more about yourself and your background? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so to get to give more context, I came back into the family business in 1989. And back then, the business was just chemical trading and manufacturing. And subsequently, we've diversified to other areas of uh, hospitality, shipping, mining, and so forth. So we're, uh, the main business is 69 years old. And, and yeah, we have three generations now working in the company. Uh, my mother is still quite active at 97. And, and so we are, we are now preparing for succession and handover. Uh, what that means, we don't quite know yet for sure, but there are fa definitely family members. Uh, they will always be family members. They're most likely going to be shareholders. Uh, what we don't know is whether they're going to come into the management or not. And so that's the big debate. And so at this moment in the succession plan, uh, we are educating the next gen. We have 13 next gen direct family, and then obviously the husbands and wives. Uh, we include that into family, and so that will be about 17 now, 16 or 17 altogether. And so these are the challenges that we have to go through in terms of what's what's next. Yes, Thank and we'll love to hear more about you know some of the details of uh, that restructuring and the governance discussions that you're going through right now. Oh. Um, it, I think a lot of families are going through similar processes, especially after COVID hit, uh, because there's this new realization that you have to have affairs in order with all of the changes happening. So um, before we get into that topic, which is going to be the first question, uh, Danny, would you like to share a little more about, um, you know, in the past, uh, your involvement with a family business and your current uh, engagement? Sure. Um, thanks. Uh, so. As uh, Rebecca mentioned, I'm a professional golfer. I've been pursuing this for the last five years, basically since I graduated uh, my undergrad from Bradley. Um, but since COVID hit in, I think it was March for us, um, uh, the Asian tour has kind of come to a halt and uh, kind of uncertain as to when we'll start again. So as I've been trying to figure out, you know, besides just preparing for the, un you know, the unknown of when we're going to start playing golf again, decided to uh, be a bit more productive with my time. And since we've been, our family's been in this process of, uh, 
you know, passing on the family business from second generation to third generation, trying to get a little bit more involved to try and understand the family business. Um, since we have so many different, um, uh, sectors, um, that we can be a part of. So I think that's been the, the neat thing is that, you know, it's a blessing that, you know, I'm able to just kind of dip my toes into different areas, whatever I find interested, uh, interesting and kind of can, um, have an idea of where I want to go from there. Um, I think that's been one of the great things from this whole succession planning thing is we've got to understand a little bit, uh, I guess the communication side for all the family members, because as my dad mentioned, we have about uh, 13 next gen. Um, and so the, the challenge for us is also because the age gap is so wide. I think it's almost about 20 years from the youngest to the oldest in that generation. Um, that poses a, a huge uh, challenge. And so understanding where everyone's mindset is in terms of what they want, how they want to be involved in family business, if they want to be involved, involved with the family business and what areas they want to be involved in. So that's kind of where we stand now. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And that's a great segue for the conversation and the first uh, question that I would like to pose to the panel. Um, with COVID, uh, and you know, everybody knows that by third, fourth generation, family businesses tend to not do what, that well. And this is statistically, you know, many of these uh, businesses dissolve or the wealth is diluted uh, through many gener generations. And it's really hard to um, continue with a group uh, intact with as a whole and also to keep and maintain that, um, that, that wealth that is generated. Uh, and even more difficult to continue growing the wealth uh, beyond the fourth generation. But added to that with COVID and the pandemic, um, what happened, I believe, to many families is that, you know, now some of those changes that some, for some families felt like they were a little bit far away, you know, next generation or a couple of generations from now, they felt a lot more immediate, uh, the possibility of death and the threat of uh, not maintaining, for example, a leadership position in your sector. So uh, many families are undergoing more introspective and um, reflective discussions on uh, what the goal is, whether this is an opportunity to uh, really figure out you know, who's going to be in charge and the governance and the structures and the systems and the processes to uh, ensure and increase the probability of the business doing well. Uh, or in, in the case of some other families, you know, this is this has been a good opportunity for them to exit and uh, think about the future chapters uh, of the resources and the capacity that they have built in the, in the family. So I wanted to ask you, in your families, uh, in the last six months or so, what has changed? What have, kind of discussions have um, kicked off and started uh, given the, the pandemic and uh, and the realization that things are... Uh, you know, can be very unstable overnight. So um, I would actually like to start with uh, Ravi and Jimmy and then uh, hear the perspective from uh, Danny and Andrea right after. So perhaps, Jimmy, would you like to start with your perspective? Did you say I, I should start? Yes, yes. Okay, sure. We always start um, with the person with the most gray hair, right? <laughs> no. All this goes first, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I want to start by the, the most obvious change is how we communicate uh, and, and the speed of communication and adapting to the changes we have today. Obviously, we can't really meet physically, uh, so we have to go towards um, meeting via Zoom as, as the means of communication or something like that, virtual. And I think that the next the next key issue is the in terms of governance i think it has ramped up uh the question about governance especially on the various businesses that we have and and how we react to some of the emergency challenges i mean we've had to make very quick decisions on many aspects of businesses that are having to have support or having to be shut down because of the situation and so i think those two areas is is the key area in terms of communication and, and, and governance. And the, the third, I would say, is uh, adapting to, I guess we call this a major disruption. Yeah. Uh, and so adapting to it as quickly as possible to the disruption. I mean, I know some, some companies or some people are still in the question, questioning why this is happening rather than what are we going to do about it? It's just time to move forward. We have to live 
and we have to live with the situation or live in coexist with COVID. And so we, I think that's that's the third thing that that's a key area where we are focusing on. Um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of families would relate to that, you know, especially in terms of uh, creating more effective channels of uh, triage where you can identify what's really urgent and also um, in the midst of that have very profound conversations. So um, we'll hear from Danny, but also, you know, as a follow up question, I would love to know more um, in the second half of the conversation. And, you know, what are some of the conclusions from those conversations that have happened uh, in terms of governance uh, as well as m more uh, effective communication? Uh, Ravi, what has happened in your family with uh, the different uh, generations and the discussions internally? So, uh, so my, so I live uh, with my father and my children. We uh, live in the same house. So definitely the communication has increased because we were locked in uh, 24 hours a day for last five months. <laughs> so communication and talk about business uh, definitely increased. But what we realized in terms of our business was that uh, we need to have uh, effective second line uh, management because although we can plan our succession and what happens when, if ever something happens to us, but business continuity for each vertical is also equally important. So that was one. The second, we realized that we were not very prepared for such an event. We never imagined. Uh, nobody could have imagined. And uh, digitization was the second bit that we had to implement on a war footing. So uh, how do we monitor remotely? How do we access data remotely? So all that, because we just shut down in two days, the country went into a shutdown. So we just didn't have enough time to prepare for this. So these were the two things which we start, which we have started working on uh, during this uh, COVID period. And Ravi, in the conversation on digitization and creating uh, the immediate solution for this fire, did that also prompt conversations about other things that could potentially be disrupted in the future and now preparing in advance for some of those possible uh, changes happening in the future? Uh, yes, it has. Uh, we have uh, discussed various options uh, that what could go wrong and how do we mitigate that? Uh, so, uh, so earlier our thought process was data security and integrity because since we are dealing with uh, research and biotech research, which is very confidential. So uh, while we are uh, digitizing, we also have to think about data security. So what if our data goes out? Because if we are giving everyone access to all the data from wherever they are. So that was one of the uh, factors we had to mitigate. So all those factors we were we had started considering as well. Yeah, in California, as you have heard, uh, we had wildfires for the last three, four weeks. And it's interesting, you know, a lot of families now realize that there's wildfires. So we have to prepare for earthquakes because the immediate thing is you have to buy and purchase okay. their purifiers because you know you need to breathe and, and survive this um, mm -hmm. next few weeks but it also weakens the sense of hey like I thought this was far away but now we have something that's uh, very hard to deal with and uh, let's see where else we should be covering our bases and so I, I've noticed that it's, it's been a very interesting trend to see how people are getting a little bit more prepared in every aspect of the family and you know a lot of families just Average families are working on their estates and you know, putting together their wills and things that they may have not thought about before. But the pandemic uh, has created this need to control certain things, right? In, in case um, uh, you, you lose control on other aspects of your, of your family business or life. So, in terms of digitization and you know creating that e-commerce component, I know Andrea, you have been working a lot on this particular aspect for your family, but. You as a as a group started before the pandemic, right? You're already yeah. bringing some of the insights from uh, Square and Silicon yeah. Valley and Stanford to the family. So tell us more about that, and uh, also you know how the pandemic has changed maybe the pace of those discussions mm -hmm. internally. Yeah. Um, so when I so I joined the family business around two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, and when I first joined, the first couple of months was really spent joining um, different meetings, going around the company to 
overall assess like what where what's the strength and what's the weakness in the company. And the main thing that I identified is that we needed to have some type of digital strategy to move forward, both kind of internally on our back end operations, our infrastructure, and then also externally with the customer experience, the way that we can engage with different users. So we've actually been investing in a lot of digital tools and software, both building internally and also buying externally. Even simple things like communication, we invested in Slack for the whole company, um, which is pretty expensive, especially if you're looking at it kind of like from a Philippine peso rate point of view. Um, but that's really helped increase like our speed of communication, visibility and transparency across all the groups. And we've, um, so yeah, we've been investing in a lot of those aspects the last two and a half years. So it was kind of, yeah, just in time for when COVID hit, we were already prepared. We had um, all the internal communications productivity tools set up. We could have we easily shifted to this remote working situation, and now we're now in a hybrid work on site and work remote situation. So, in terms of internal tools and productivity, like that's still been at like peak uh, maximum capacity. And then externally with our customers, we've developed um, we have developed a strategy for digital content, digital presence, and also for e-commerce presence. So everything from conducting virtual showrooms, showroom tours for our physical showrooms, to creating better and more engaging communities online, all the way to you know end of the purchase cycle, um, where you're able to purchase um, with you know three simple clicks on our website. We want you to be able to purchase any any product or item um, that you're interested. In. So I think when COVID hit, we were able to shift. And now some of the business units definitely are, are suffering, but majority of them have actually already overtaken their sales from last year. And e-commerce as a business unit, we're 3x more than last year's sales already. And we're aiming to end the year at 5x um, of last year's sales. So it's really exciting. And in a funny way, part of the company is now undergoing this growth stage. We're hiring a lot of different people, more on like digital tools, um, um, technology positions um, and yeah so so it's very exciting I think one of the things that really helped with this is we had intergenerational buy-in from the very beginning so when I first pitched this idea to my parents um, they had um, they like fully supported the idea um, both kind of with their time um, with their resources and then when my younger sister who's now also part of the family business joined uh, around two years ago she came from a similar tech focused background. And then we've been working on different parts of the company together in tandem to really make a lot of these changes uh, uh, roll out across different areas of the company. You know, because you have several siblings, I'm curious to hear if there is a bit of friendly competition, you know, because you're in charge of this department and doing <laughs> well. COVID has made it very uh, obvious that uh, your department is quite important for the families business revenue, uh, especially in times like this. So yeah, how do you collaborate slash, you know, become accountable for different departments and how is that conversation internally? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. So actually, we don't have enough time to compete with each other or to have any of that sibling rivalry. There's just so much work to do across the company that Angela, my sister, is working on a lot of um, also very impactful projects at the same time. So she's actually working a lot on our regional expansion plans. We just incorporated a company in Singapore this year. We're working on a few other projects for um, uh, regional expansion and the in Q4, also in Q1 of next year. So there's no shortage of really impactful products, uh, projects to work on. Um, and actually, my younger brother will be coming back home next year after working at Google for a couple of years. And so similar kind of like tech background, we're excited to see what other ideas he'd have. And we feel like at that point in time, there will be new opportunities and possibly new business units for him, depending on what he's interested in as well. But I think one of the big changes of COVID really is forcing us to have deeper conversations about the future of the company. Um, previously, we'd always say, yes, you know, we need to meet as a family. We need to figure out what's our one-year goal, what's our two-year vision, three-year vision. But we were always too focused on day-to-day -day operational work. You know, someone would always get dragged into another meeting. But then now, um, similar to everyone else, we're stuck in the same house 24 hours, every seven days a week. Now we're really able to carve out significant chunks of time to really think and plan and discuss. So now we have a one year vision, a rough one, um, but at least we know the direction that we're going in. 
Uh, that's very interesting. You know, there are so many uh, stats that show that in different countries, COVID has uh, increased the number of divorce filings. Uh, <laughs> during this like three months, people are locked up. And I wonder, you know, as you're also uh, getting closer to being more uh, honest about what each member of the family wants, you know, perhaps divergence on interests uh, and vision on the future of the mm -hmm. family could also come more clear, more obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you're talking more explicitly. Um, so on, on that note, you know, I want to move on to, to Danny and ask you um, the same question that I asked Andrea, you know, from the perspective of a new generation. Um, I, I guess to some level, you know, when, when you are um, a shareholder and the successor for mm -hmm. some of these businesses, you assume that, you know, eventually at some point when you're a little bit older, you'll get involved or, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have... Um, is some part of the company still existing and coming down to you or your generation. But with COVID, it was not as obvious that there will be uh, a company uh, for many families uh, after th this crisis. And so does that um, increase in, in your generation the interest and engagement and thinking, okay, so I have to protect these assets, right? This is part of what uh, I'm going to have as part of, you know, my identity moving forward. And uh, we need to all pull resources to come together and, and do our part to make sure that this business continues to be healthy. Is that a conversation that happens between your peers, your cousins, your siblings? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, I kind of, to go off that question, but also to continue it off my, what my dad said earlier, you know, our family business during the succession plan, we started this family council. Um, which has about seven people, including my dad, my uncle, and my grandma even. And then we have four of the next gens in that. And so, um, you know, kind of in the last two years or so, you know, prior to leading up to COVID, we're going through, you know, kind of a dilution process because we are in so many different businesses and industries trying to figure out, you know, should we really be focusing our time in so many different areas or should we kind of be focusing on a few areas and making sure that we do those well? Um, and so that was something, and, and like my dad mentioned it, you know, I think it's come now, it's expedited the process where, you know, we've started to understand and see what businesses or what industries can survive during this time and which ones can't. And so maybe that's been, you know, a blessing in disguise because it, it has eliminated us having to really look at the businesses. And instead, you know, the world has, or I guess COVID has opened our eyes to what can survive and what can survive. You know, for example, like hospitality and, and restaurants and things like that. I mean, I think all over the world, those have been a few industries that have really struggled during this time. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially for me, I think during this time, it's been, it's been, uh, I've been able to reflect and see, you know, what, what's going to be come from, you know, from this after golf, because when I started golf, um, as a profession, I told myself I'd give it three to five years, kind of see, you know, can you make a living out of it? Cause it's a tough career, no guarantee, you know, you're basically an entrepreneur, entrepreneur out there trying to make a living and hoping it works out. But if it doesn't, you know, what's kind of, uh, the next you know, the next thing. And so, you know, between taking um, my um, uh, master's degree at Thunderbird um, and, you know, trying to dip my toes into the family business in different parts, I think um, are all kind of the right steps for me to kind of put myself in a position that, you know, if I do decide to completely move away from golf or make golf kind of a part-time thing that I have that option. And I, and I think within the, the cousins too, you know, some of them are also looking at that because, you know, even if you are still, working full time now, it, things are different now during this time. There's a new normal, I guess people are saying. And so um, trying to understand, you know, the, the adjustment of, of all this and, and trying to figure out, you know, how you want to kind of move forward. Yeah, I think that's a very good perspective. You know, I think a lot of families are going through that process of spring cleaning, the Marie Kondo of uh, the different business units, right? And, and looking at what is really uh, creating a uh, value for for the group uh, and in terms of the potential to survive this crisis and beyond that you know in the in the future um a lot of families are just going through that introspection of you know let's just focus on the essentials right mm -hmm. and i think that is a very good segue for the last part of the conversation for the next 10 minutes uh, which is on you know what is next for the families? What is this opportunity that we have now? Because some of the conversations that were not top priority before, because everybody was busy with their day to day, now there is a political will to 
have these conversations on more fundamental principles guiding uh, the, the companies and the business, uh, conversations on legacy, conversations on uh, contribution uh, to the world, to the planet, to social justice, to uh, you know, actually helping economic recovery with the reopening happening in many countries after COVID. Um, and I, I'm especially curious on the role of the, the new generations in driving some of that conversation and what are some of the, you know, uh, items on the wish list of the new generations to be part of the business, which could include you know, technology, innovation, more uh, activity on, on venture and with the startup world, the things that, for example, Andre, you're talking about, and you, know, you mm -hmm. you're very involved in creating also part of the ecosystem in Philippines, uh, and that's really driven by uh, some of the younger folks in the families, right? So um, maybe we'll start uh, with you, you two, Andrea and and Danny, on what what is part of your vision and, and what you notice in your peers, in your friends who are part of families as well. Uh, in terms of where you would like the, the families to pay attention to, not just on the bottom line of making, you know, profits and money, but also uh, what about the rest uh, of the impact that you may create with um, this uh, platform that you have created? So what's important to you, to you both? Yeah, I, I can take a quick stab at this first. Um, I think uh, three main things come to mind. One is our responsibility as like owners in the company to make sure, especially in this kind of rougher economic situation that we're doing, um, we're, we're being good owners for the company, that we're providing a safe working environment, that we're providing fulfilling careers, and that we're providing job stability, um, and also exciting new opportunities for all the people that we're working with um, across the different business units. I, that's one big focus. Um, and I think that's been one conversation we have regularly now, especially during COVID, um, what is the state and status of all of our different team members, all the way from you know a top executive down to people who help us out on like the warehouse and like the warehouse crew. Um, I think a second one is our responsibility as a company in, in this economic environment in the Philippines. Like what can we do um, to help other communities that are around us as well? I think there's really this sense of like social responsibility. Um, you know, Philippine government, there's a lot of like mixed reviews about how well they're doing, similar to other countries, I think. And so that's just really making us really reflect more what part do we want to play in society, right? And so um, we're making uh, some plans around that as well. And then I guess me personally, um, at least for me and my siblings, uh, all of our background is in tech. And we definitely feel that technology and entrepreneurship is a way to help um, different economies grow, specifically developing economies. And we feel like that's a way to help um, people um, and different communities solve problems and take advantage of any opportunities that might come up now. So we've been organizing a lot of different talks and events and provide resources for people who, um, for really smart people who perhaps don't either have the connections or the resources or um, who just need uh, support or like a, a sounding board to start different ideas within the tech and entrepreneurship space. I think those are the, the three areas that my siblings and I have been talking about pretty regularly. And just a quick follow up to that, you know, when you and your siblings say we want to invest in the ecosystem, we want to do work with startups, um, how is that presented formally? In which channel do you present yeah. it to um, yeah. the powers to be, which are in this case your parents? Um, and what is the official approval process for that? You know, do, do you have an, an allocation of uh, capital and resources, human capital included? that you can play with and, and, and <laughs> invest in or is it something that, you know, you have to uh, create proposals that are yeah. approved by, by your parents? So I guess maybe we, we've done it a little bit differently. We've done it independently. So this is um, just us siblings. We pulled together our resources um, and we created this fund, this investment vehicle called, called Vector. And so that's kind of how this is manifested. We've been, we wanted to marry the best of both worlds of our experience from Silicon Valley and in Southeast Asia to provide like cross-border collaboration opportunities and mentorship opportunities. So we've set up a couple of these coffee chat or lightning talk events for uh, technologists in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia to help unlock um, some of the uh, entrepreneurship potential that we see here. And so that's been very exciting. Our parents have been supportive and they put in a little bit um, of funds as well into, into Vector. So that's been exciting. But this one has been pretty much um, sibling directed, I, I would say, uh, which has been exciting because it gives us a space to experiment, be autonomous as well and, and be independent. 
That's fantastic. Danny, how about you? What is your, your wish that the company, the family business, you know, does in terms of uh, affecting the wider community and, and the rest of the world? Well, I think one thing that um, has kind of been ingrained in, into me, into my life is kind of Habitat for Humanity for sure. I mean, and, and Happy Hearts, um, you know, one focuses on building houses, the other focuses on building schools. But it's something that, you know, my dad has been involved with for a long time. And I remember even from, you know, from high school days, so 10 years ago when I was involved in with Habitat for Humanity up until now. And now, you know, trying to utilize my platform as a, as a professional golfer to kind of um, – support that and i'm brand i'm ambassador for habitat for humanity and so whenever we have tournaments um you know around the around the world we try to do um certain kind of um uh, like a like fundraising events you know so like for example we'll get a group of players and for every birdie you kind of donate you know x amount of ten dollars to two habitats so like for example last year during indonesian masters we managed to raise about fifteen thousand dollars for habitat for humanity which goes to all sorts of disaster relief building homes. Um, and I think that's been something that that's been great from, from the second generation, you know, my dad's generation is trying to, you know, keep us involved in, in the community, especially in Indonesia, um, where there's so much to, to give back so much to do. Um, but secondly, I'd say, I think communication, um, is something that keeps coming up, you know, with this COVID situation now. Um, and then Rebecca, you mentioned about the legacy, you know, going forward, you know, as I mentioned, our family, our next gen, third generation is 13 people. And it's, I think, ranges from about 20 years of age from the oldest to the youngest. And everyone is in a different part of their life. You know, some people who've been in the family business for, you know, 10, 20 years, some who are just getting in, some who aren't even in yet. And so I think it's important to, to keep that line of communication because as in any family, I think there's always kind of that, you know, family politics that gets involved. So if you can keep that communication there and, and kind of build off of it, um, hopefully that makes for a little bit uh, less challenges as you go forward, at least so you can understand where everybody, everybody's mindset is and, and what their, you know, what their ideas are going forward. And uh, we have three minutes left. Thank you so much, Danny, for that perspective. Uh, Jimmy, do you have any reactions on, on uh, your son's comment and specifically, you know, what is the wish of your generation uh, in terms of the contributions of the new generation for the future vision of the company? And Ravi, you're sort of still in between because you still have your father who's pretty involved and uh, your children are quite young. And so tell me what it feels like to be sandwiched in between, you know, the, you're like the transition generation, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, because we have a couple of minutes left, maybe a minute each, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, go ahead, Jimmy. I'll go, you go ahead. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so my father and I, we are on the same page. I really don't know where my children uh, would be. But uh, since we are focused on sustainability, I think this uh, COVID time has... Uh, uh, reinforced our thoughts that whatever projects we are doing in this sustainability field, I think uh, we are on the right track because uh, I think the world is moving towards that. And COVID has definitely uh, enlightened everyone that uh, that would be the way to go. And we need to relook at our lifestyles. And in terms of giving back to the society, even during the COVID times, our you know, family foundation, which my father runs, and I'm a very integral part to it. We have worked uh, serving the community and I hope that my children also follow the same path. Thank you. And yeah. that remark to me for the last minute of the panel. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that uh, the legacy that my, my father started uh, built is, is something that I, I, it brings a lot of memory because how he came from nothing to to what we have today, it, it all because of what he what they went through and so i think that's how uh how we have we are similar in character and i hope that's what has been passed down to danny in, in a sense on on how we should give back but i just want to also add that in in this cycle of business that i've been involved in for over 30 years uh we i came back and we were in a growth path uh, diversify invest invest and now we're sort of like consolidate but we can't really get away from the fact that the next gen is in that in that phase of let's grow and let's expand and so we're having to think of different vehicles um, one of the vehicle is private equity fund internally uh, i mean setting up a fund the second is actually investment committee uh, for for the kids to actually present their dreams and and we fund them uh, so this cycle is will never end. 
I think that's that's the cycle of business and it's probably the family business uh, cycle as well. Thank I you. Love, I love that final comment because it gives us this optimism of uh, the vision of growth, which is so needed right now uh, in a time when everybody is just trying to uh, keep tight and, 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 and survive. Um, great uh, contributions to the panel. Thank you so much for making time today and for sharing personal stories and family stories. I, I believe that the attendees were very happy to uh, relate to some of those stories that you shared today. Um, I can't uh, thank you enough and please stay safe and uh, good luck with all of the conversations you're having internally. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, we haven't figured out how to exit. <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> oh, here, the bottom left. Leave. Bottom left, yeah. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.